Hi students, welcome to the notes on atomic number and average atomic mass. Pull out your science notebook, let's get started. Here's the essential question I recommend you write at the top of your page. How do we determine the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons of an atom? Before we directly answer that question, I want to pay tribute to all the scientists who helped contribute to our knowledge of the atom over the years. Even back in 460 BC, Democritus determined or came up with the idea that atoms exist. And, at, and he came up with the term atomos, meaning uncuttable. Later on, Marie and Antoine Lavoisier came up with a law of conservation of mass to help us explore how different pieces of matter are made of particular particles. John Dalton helped came up with the atomic theory. J.J. Thompson, by using a cathode ray tube, helped us figure out that atoms have small particles, smaller particles in them, namely electrons with negative charge and protons. Mary Curie helped out by helping us by isolating radioactive elements and helped us learn a little bit more that atoms can be unstable and the nuclei can break apart. Rutherford was the one who helped discover that atoms have a very dense nucle nuclei, a center in the middle of the atom, even though the atom is mostly empty space. Niels Bohr helped us determine that electrons reside in specific energy levels around the atom. And James Chadwick, also known as Jimmy Neutron, helped us discover that the nucleus is made of not just protons, but neutrons with zero charge. And even more modern day, Murray Gelman helped determine that atoms, protons, and neutrons themselves are made of even smaller, more fundamental particles, such as quarks. So what do we know about an atom? Let's review some of the parts that we're familiar with, starting with the nucleus. The nucleus, or the center of the atom, has a positive charge overall. Now, this is where all the mass is located. Even though the volume of the nucleus is very small compared to the size of the atom, the nucleus has protons in it. Protons are what give the nucleus its positive charge. And protons are what give the atom its identity. Also in the nucleus are neutrons. Neutrons have no charge. We say that they are neutrally charged. So their responsibility is to act like glue. They hold the protons in together in the nucleus. And if you have enough of them, they cause the nucleus to either be stable or unstable. Now, outside of the nucleus, we have the electron cloud. The electron cloud is a negative charge. It's attracted to the positive nucleus. The electron cloud, we say, doesn't have a mass although it has a very large volume. It's what makes atoms big and makes, causes them to have a larger or smaller radius. The electron itself is in the electron cloud, specifically in specific orbitals. The electrons are negatively charged and they're responsible for bonding. They allow one atom to bond to another as well as to be reactive. We also talked about the periodic table of the elements. This periodic table organizes the different types of atoms or elements based on physical and chemical properties. Now the periodic table has some specific information on it that we're gonna explore right now. The periodic table's numbers tell us a lot about the subatomic particles. The top number up here is known as the atomic number. That's the identity of the element. You might recall that the identity of an element is determined by the number of protons. So this number, the atomic number, is just the number of protons. And that's always true for each element you see on the periodic table. So this number six lets us know that this is carbon. And the element symbol for carbon is C. And this is the element name, also typically written on the periodic table. The last bit of information here on the bottom is the atomic mass, and this represents the mass of the nucleus. Now, the mass you see here is an average of many of the elements of carbon, which we'll talk about later when we talk about isotopes. But the atomic mass can help us determine the number of neutrons. The number of neutrons, remember, along with the protons, are part of an atom's mass. So knowing that, we can figure out how many neutrons an atom has. If we take the atomic mass and round it, and subtract the atomic number, which is the number of protons, we can determine the leftovers in the mass, which is the number of neutrons. So again, this is for the average isotope, and we'll talk about isotopes later, but that's how you determine the number of neutrons. What about electrons? Well, the periodic table doesn't have anything directly related to electrons, but we can determine the number of electrons for neutrally charged atoms. And most atoms are neutrally charged as they reside around the Earth. The number of electrons is equal to the number of protons. And the reason for that is, is because they're oppositely charged. The electrons are attracted to the protons. Therefore, there should be enough of them to cancel out the number of protons. So let's try this out. Here's carbon. 
If we take a look on our periodic table, we're starting with the atomic number six. That's the number of protons. There are six protons for carbon. How about neutrons? Well, if we take the mass and round it, which is 12, and subtract the number of protons, which is there's six protons, then we're left over with the number of neutrons in the mass, which is six. So carbon has six neutrons. Electrons are also six. Remember, electrons are the same as protons if the element is neutral, which we're going to assume that it is at the moment. Try out the student practice yourself. How many of each subatomic particle does an average neutral gold atom have? Has. Here is gold as it's written on the periodic table. Pause the video right now and see if you can solve this. How many protons, neutrons, and electrons does an average neutral gold atom have? Did you try it yourself? I sure hope so. Based on the periodic table and the things we see, there are 79 protons. That's pretty easy because the atomic number is the number of protons for every atom, and that never changes. Now here, the number of neutrons can be found to be 118. How did we get that number? Well, we need to take the atomic mass. The atomic mass here, if we round it, is 197. Remember, neutrons come in whole numbers, so we're going to need to round this number. We're going to subtract the number of protons, which is 79. That leads us with the number of neutrons. Finally, we have the number of electrons. Here, it's 79. The reason for that, again, is the number of protons is 79. If there's 79 positive protons, typically there's that many electrons, which are negative, come and try to surround it to neutralize it. That leads us to the end of our notes. Take a moment right now and review and highlight key terms. Ponder and ask questions. Write those questions down, but don't forget to seek answers to those questions and write those down as well. And summarize the essential question deeply in a way, maybe even include claim, evidence, and reasoning. All right, good luck.